Giants open camp tomorrow in East Rutherford, New Jersey. That's where Paul Schwartz will be. Beat writer, Giants, New York Post, longtime beat writer, and a great friend of the, of the program and of the University of Albany, grad of U Albany. And Paul, uh, kind enough to join us as we get set to roll for another NFL season, NFL training camp. And he joins us here on Big Board Sports 1045, the team ESPN Radio in Albany. Good morning, Paul. Gentlemen, I will start with one thing for you guys, okay? Yeah. Uh-oh. There is no way Greg Gattuso's Great Danes are going to finish ninth in the CAA. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. I agree with you on that. I'm 100% with you on that. And then getting no love this morning, nine, pick ninth out of 12. Well, um, I know, you know, betting is something we should really not do, but uh, if you guys want to go, uh, where's, the, <laughs> where's the casino in uh, Schenectady or yeah, something? Yeah, where, right. where, where, where can you uh, put a few bet down? Put a couple of bucks down for me, <laughs> Albany, with the over finishing uh, over nine. I think yeah. I'm with you. I, I am with you on that, and uh, and and I think we will be right on that. Looking forward to seeing what UA does. Just going to figure out that quarterback spot, which is a big one uh, this summer. And if they can do that, I think they have a lot of other really really good parts. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. will be at camp tomorrow. That is what we have been reporting, and that's what will happen. Where do, where do we stand with the contract of OBJ? Is, are they on the verge of getting him signed? Are they working on it? What do we know about that? In- I don't think they're on the verge, no. Um, and I didn't think they would be on the verge. And I also thought Odell would report on time. You know, I mean, you have to read the tea leaves here, um, guys, that, you know, the, the, the Giants and Odell are in a pretty good place right now. You know, they, they back in the spring, the video – um, you know, them not shooting down trade rumors, you know, they really weren't trade rumors, but they were, you know, they took a few calls, they uh, kind of um, showed Odell who was boss a little bit, and um, John Maris said, I'm tired of answering questions about Odell, and um, you know, uh, from then on, it uh, both sides are in a good place, and I would expect the deal to get done before the season, uh, not before training camp. That starts tomorrow. Uh, you know, players, all the players report tomorrow. Um, they practice for the first time on Thursday. Uh, maybe sometime late in camp, uh, maybe after camp, but before the season. Um, I don't think there's urgency for the Giants to do it right now. I think they want to see what they've got in Odell. See him run around a little bit, see him get knocked around a little bit. You know, you guys know training camp is not what it was when it was in Albany in the two a days and, you know, a little more hitting. But, but you know, you can still get roughed up a little bit. And the Giants, I think, want to see some of that coming off a fractured ankle for Odell before they give him the money. But I think it'll happen. Paul, is that one of the reasons that, that you think, and the main reason that you think Odell shows up and, and, and uh, does what he is supposed to do and practice and all that because he knows in the back of his mind that – his agent and the Giants are working behind the scenes and that he feels pretty confident that at the end of summer camp, right before the start of the season, there's a pretty darn good chance he's going to get his money and get a new deal. Yes, I, I, I would say that uh, assessment is correct. Um, you know, there's, 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 they're, they're in a good place. They're, their relationship is good. You know, let's face it, Odell did not show up for all the OTAs in the spring. He, he didn't show up for most of them, but he's here for some of them. You know, last year he was um, um, not in New Jersey for any of them. Um, you know, his teammates like him a lot. Uh, you know, Pat Shermer seems to be developing a nice relationship with the guy. Uh, you know, Pat Shermer's a smart guy. He's not going to, uh, you know, anoint him as his best friend right away. But, you know, he says we're getting to know each other. All is good. Look, this guy's no dummy. You're an offensive head coach. You see what Odell Beckham can do, and you want to make nice with the guy. You know, he's a complete game changer. So, yeah, I think, I think Odell feels that uh, something will get done, and um, it deserves to get done. You know, just about every receiver in his draft class has gotten a bigger contract extension. Odell's better than all of them. So, um, you know, the, 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 real, the real speed bump here was the injury. You know, the injury's always kind of, you know, just slow everything down. And, 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 and until uh, he's 100%, maybe it'll slow this down. But uh, he's pretty close to that, and I think it'll get done. Paul Schwartz of the New York Post with us here on Big Board Sports 104.5, the team ESPN Radio. Paul, I read your your piece over the weekend. Uh, Eli Manning now has everything uh, except an excuse. Where is the Giants quarterback in terms of his level of confidence? Because it seems like management here has, has put a lot of faith in him that we surround him with the right pieces. He can still take us to the promised land. Um, yeah, I, I know a lot of readers had uh, had some issues with that headline. Uh, 
um, you know, making it sound like I wrote that Eli makes excuses, which I didn't write the headline, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't say that Eli is an excuse maker. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the gist of the story was that, you know, not only is Eli coming back, I mean, let's face it, this is a guy who started all but one game last year on a team that was 3-13, and 13, and the, the trend the last five or six years is definitely downward for this team. Um, and they did, not only is Eli back, but he's emboldened. You know, they, they've strengthened his hold on, on the job right now. They, they did not draft a quarterback with the second pick, which they could have. They did not. They drafted a quarterback who you guys are familiar with, uh, you know, Kyle Loletta with the, in the fourth round, but that's certainly not a, uh, a threat to Eli right now. Uh, they're sticking with Davis Webb as the backup, not a threat to Eli right now. Um, what do they do? They sign, uh, they draft with the second pick a running back. Uh, which is, you know, a perfect guy for a, a quarterback to, to add to his team. You can throw the ball to Saquon. You can hand it to him. He's supposed to be a great weapon. I figure he will be. Um, they get Odell Beckham coming back. They sign Nate Solder in free agency to protect Eli's blind side. So, yes, the, you know, the, the new brain trust came in, Dave Gettleman and Pat Shermer, and, you know, they didn't have to sign off on Eli. You know, they could have studied him and looked at him and reported back to the owner and said, you know what, we think it's time to move on, or we think it's time to draft a quarterback. We love uh, Sam Darnold, or we love Josh Allen, and, you know, we think we need to, um, you know, at least have his uh, replacement in place. They chose not to do that. So, yes, this is, this is you know, for, for, this, for the foreseeable future, he's signed this year and next year. You know, they want Eli to be their starting quarterback, and not to be a team that goes from three wins to seven or eight wins. You know, they think they can contend here, and um, that's why Eli's back. Well, I know Ben McAdoo doesn't think Nate Solder is that good of a player, but uh, I'm sure Pat Shermer does. Well, how much improved do you think that offensive line will be? And I, I revert to that with what Ben McAdoo told. He told you a lot of good stuff, be honest with you, in, in your interview with him. But that was one thing that stood out to me. He didn't think that, that Solder was, was that good of a player, but still nice to have on the Giants. Right. I mean, Ben McAdoo told me that uh, he doesn't think he's a very good player. And now, you know, we can argue what that means and if his Ben's crazy or not. But um, Nate Solder has been in the league seven years. He's never made a Pro Bowl. So, you know, maybe he's not a very good player, but he's certainly a good player. Uh, you know, that's semantics. Um, like I said, he's not a decorated. Uh, uh, he, the only thing decorated about him at left tackle right now is he's the highest paid one. Um, and, and, you know, Bel- Bill Belichick entrusted him for seven years to be the blindside protector of Tom Brady, so that's pretty good. Look, he's a massive upgrade from what they had, which was Eric Flowers, who's been kicked over to the right side. Uh, he's a dependable, huge guy. You know, if you guys come down to training camp, whatever, you talk to Nate Saul, he's just a mountain of a man. He's, you know, six eight and big shoulders and lean and, and, and just a big, big guy and uh, smart and tough and, you know, quiet uh, professional, so uh, he will do a good job at left tackle, I would think. But, you know, to think the Giants uh, are getting an all-pro dominant left tackle, that's not who Nate Solder is. Um, you know, he's not, uh, should not be the highest paid left tackle in the league, but he is. That's what free agency is. That's what it does, you know, especially when you're desperate. But he's a big upgrade considering who he's replacing. Paul, you'll love this. Without seeing a single play, I've already kind of made up my mind that I'm not sure this Giants team has the pass rush necessary in today's NFL to be a really effective defense, or I guess go back two years to when they were so good at creating turnovers. But the back end may make up for some of that. Uh, What does the addition of Connor Barwin bring to this Giants team? Should this be any kind of signing that fans get excited about? Well, put it this way, Connor Barwin had five sacks for the Rams last year. You know, most uh, fans know him, uh, you know, for his uh, pretty long stay with the Eagles as a pass rusher. Um, so, but he had five sacks with the Rams last year, and no giant on the team other than Olivier Vernon had five sacks last year in the NFL. Wow. So, um, yes, this this is a this is a team that needs pass rush help. Um, I think they may get some eventually from Lorenzo Carter, their third round pick from Georgia. Um, you know, he, he's a really good athlete, and I think they foresee him um, as a pass rusher. You know, Vernon is now going to play outside linebacker. That's a stand-up position um, in James Betcher's 3-4 defense. So, you know, maybe that, that frees him up to be a, a, a more of a pass rush threat. But let's face it, Olivier Vernon is a, you know, high, high end of his, of his um, stats are like a 10-11 sack guy, not a 15-16 sack guy. Uh, you know, maybe he ups it a little bit, but... Um, you know, they, 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 they uh, traded away Jason Pierre-Paul. He's, he was the diminished player, but still diminished with one hand. He had eight and a half sacks last year. So I agree. I think the sacks, the pass rush, 
Um, I think the whole defense overall basically is um, we, we have to score points, we have to control the ball with Saquon Barkley, and we have to entrust that James Betcher can figure out a way to hold teams under 17 or 20 points. I don't think they look at this as a dominant defense right now. Uh, but, you know, but a defense can, can kind of get the job done if things fall their way and the offense more than does their job. Do you think it'll be a difference maker by switching to that 3-4? Well, um, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, I think it's a hard, you know, 3-4 is less played in the NFL, so therefore it's, it's harder to prepare for. But, you know, if it's not run well, um, you know, it won't be effective. And it remains to be seen if the Giants personnel is best suited to this. Like I said, Olivier Vernon has, has played some stand-up outside linebacker with the Dolphins, but it's still fairly new to him. You know, Kareem Martin comes over. From the uh, Cardinals, uh, Josh Morrow uh, comes over from the Cardinals, although he played, um, he will not play the first four games. He's on suspension the first four games. Um, you know, I, I think that Alec Ogletree and uh, B.J. Goodson, if B.J. Goodson stays healthy, are solid in the middle. But, you know, the Giants are not exactly known here as linebacker you, you know what I mean, like the old days. And so, you know, you need more linebackers to play this. So, um, you know, hence why uh, one of the reasons why they drafted Lorenzo Carter and signed, just signed Connor Barwin. Hey, Paul, in all your years covering the Giants, what is the strangest injury you've ever come across? I, I think of it only because the Mets continue to find ways to amaze us, hand, foot, and mouth disease for Noah Syndergaard. Yeah, that's a, that's a um, you know, I didn't even, I thought that was a kid's, you know, I thought it was like, a, you know, now that Saratoga's open, like hoof and mouth disease. You know what I mean? I thought it was like a horse disease. It, and um, it is more of a kid's thing. I don't know, I don't know how he ended up with it. Well, he was he was at a kid's kid. He was at a kid's day, you know, and he uh, I guess he picked it up from those little rugrats running around shaking his hands and things, or you know, wiping their nose on him. Um, um, well, I you know, you guys remember in Albany, um, um, Brian Williams, the center, you know, early in the Giants' tenure in Albany, he got his finger got a, got a, his eye poked uh, by an errant finger going through a face mask, and that that essentially ended Brian Williams' career. I remember that he he had a black eye and. They said he'll be out for a couple of days, and he ended up missing the whole season and was never the same. I mean, that was a really strange one, you know, a non kind of a non football contact. You know, he 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 had the double vision in the eye. That was a strange one. Um, yeah, no, there's there's always strange injuries and medicals and things like that. But you know, the Mets seem to uh, raise the bar, I guess, or lower the bar in these <laughs> things on a on a constant basis. No doubt. Well, Paul, we're heading uh, tentatively right now, heading your way. Uh, Wednesday of next week for uh, radio in the morning, and then we'll stay and do our TV stuff in the afternoon. So uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you then, but we uh, always appreciate a few minutes, my man. All right, anytime, guys. Take care. Thanks, Thank Paul. you, Paul. Paul Schwartz. All right. Giants beat writer, New York Post.